Do you want to trick people into thinking you're a good designer because you can make things move? This is After Effects 101 2. version 2. Welcome. You may wonder, why After Effects? I hate it. It's terrible. And yes, sometimes when you're working with After Effects, you would be so frustrated that you will see your entire life flash before your eyes. And you'd be like, is it all worth it? Should I end it all? And sometimes the answer would feel like it's a yes. But when that happens, there's something called creative cow where all the answers to all your problems are just right there. That's a very colorful introduction, isn't it? We're doing this, which is just as colorful. And hopefully you learned something, because I'm guessing if you clicked on this video, it's because you want to learn something. Not sure that's going to happen. So we're doing this geo thing. I'm actually not doing this entire thing. I changed a few things, and I screen recorded that before um, with another shape, but Everything that I'm doing here is something that I used for that. Same principles, everything is always the same with me. Remember copy and paste? There's going to be that too. We're going to start by creating a new composition. And for that, we're going to name it. You're going to define the dimensions and your frame rate. I usually go with 30. You can choose whatever you want. And there you go. That's a new composition. It is black for me because... <laughs> Who's surprised? No, that's basically my default background color. So we are going to start by making a square by clicking on the square icon. <laughs> and we're going to move our anchor point first. To explain what an anchor point is, it's basically um, as if you had a shape. Let's say that's a shape. Why am I using objects to demonstrate? So we have an, uh, an elastic band. She's using black objects on a black background. Good lord. That is going to be our anchor point. That is the anchor point. What happens if you rotate an object? If your anchor point is here, that means that Good lord. your object is going to rotate around your anchor point. I'm going to create a circle now because I want them to all be following a circle to be kind of, kind of geometrical. Why am I saying kind of? Because After Effects is not the most precise kind of software so you have to deal with it now that i have my circle i'm going to move my squares on that line and i am going to create more squares by copying and pasting and i want eight there we go we have eight so what am i doing next i am using the pen tool i am trying to create a shape that i like so i'm doing that multiple times until i get to a point where i'm okay with it and no we're not worshiping the devil even though this channel may very much look like it we're not. It's just, it just happens to be a little star that has nothing special to it. Although I did do this a few years ago for a t-shirt. Um, and as you can see from the beginning, it is not the one that I ended up ending up with. Okay. Now we are going to add trim paths. What is a trim path? Trim paths is a way to fill your path. Um, progressively with keyframes that means that if you use the end you have a start and you have an end the end at zero percent is going to be your shape entirely empty and as you set it to 100 percent it's going to be your shape entirely full and we can do the same thing with start to empty your path again and as we we're talking about that we have to talk about keyframes a keyframe is a point in time where a certain parameter has a certain value, meaning that, for example, the 0% of the AND parameter uh, is set as 0 at this specific point in time. And as you set your end point to 100%, it means that at this point, it is 100%. If you go in between those keyframes, you're going to see that the end parameter is set to 50-ish percent. And basically, the software creates intermediate non-visible in your timeline keyframes to basically make the motion happen and as we're moving forward i am trying to get my shape to be filled but that's not all i'm doing so i want two points to start the filling of the shape if that makes any sense i don't want the shape to be filled from one point all the way to the end i want two points to two points to start uh, filling up the shape and to do that, I'm copying and pasting my previous uh, full filling shape. And I'm going to set both of those to 50% of filling. I want them to start at two different points 
purposefully so that they would basically meet at the very end. And to do that, we're using the offset parameter. That basically means that your starting point of the filling is um, gonna be able to be moved uh, within your shape. So because it's an angle, I want it to be at exactly 50% of 360 being 180. So now what I want to do is to move my little squares so that they kind of like appear in a fairly creative way. So by using position, you can basically set your first keyframe by using this little button. And then you just go somewhere else in a timeline and you can move your object and After Effects is going to create a keyframe for you wherever you place your object. So I'm placing my keyframe further away in time and then I'm going back and I am placing them up and down because I want them to come in and that's exactly what happens. I'm doing the same thing with the ones in the middle and with the ones in the middle I want them to appear in a certain way. I want them to scale up so I'm doing the same thing by setting keyframes and I also want them to have an opacity that comes from 0 to 100% while they're scaling up and obviously uh, as you have different parameters overlapping in time, they will basically work together. And we are now editing the speed graph. The speed graph is basically a visual representation of speed. And as it goes up or down, that means that um, speed is increasing. So at the peak of your little curve is basically the peak of speed. The speed is increasing and then decreasing. When I am done with that, I am actually going to go with using parenting. Parenting is a great way to move multiple objects by only moving one or a few um, and have a bunch of different shapes following that rule or those rules that you're setting to that first object. So what I want to do is I want three of my layers to be children of one layer. And to do that, I'm selecting my three layers and I'm using that little swirly icon and I'm dragging it, not just clicking, dragging it all the way to the layer that I want to set as the parent. So what I want to do with the parent is basically set a rotation. So I'm making sure that my anchor point is at the middle so that I can basically use rotation uh, to have them all rotate by applying that to the parent. And on top of that, I am also going to use opacity on all of them. So if you want to add multiple keyframes to multiple layers, uh, for the same parameter, you can select them all. You can hit the shortcut for the one that you want to edit. In the case of opacity, the shortcut is T. You can click on the one that's on one of the layers you selected and it's going to apply it to all of them. What am I doing next? I am checking and rechecking and rewatching and rewatching again to make sure everything works. I am setting my speed for the billionth time because that, that that's pretty much what After Effects is. Just changing the speed all the time and that's it you can see my final result being very different from my initial one I did that I made a few changes oh, a lot of changes and yeah the new one is much better I'm actually using the exact same parameters so and the same techniques for everything that's after effects that was not frustrating because experience and you know what if you don't like it you don't have to be a motion designer you can do whatever you want you can be a just, just designer and now is, is the time where I offer my end screens to you. Choice of words, my god. End screens right there. Um, in the meantime, I can ask you, I don't know, what's your favorite color? Who are you? <laughs> where are we going in life? These are the questions little Sebastian never had to answer because he was a horse. <laughs>